this segment is brought to you by PadProof. PadProof allows you to offer your customers a richer and far more compelling experience than traditional proofing, increasing your brand exposure and print sales. PadProof is the world's most powerful iPad-based proofing solution. Using this free app, your clients can immediately begin ordering prints and sharing photos with friends and family. You choose the lab, you set the prices, and they send you the money. Visit PadProof.com and sign up today to offer this incredible experience to all your clients. Show, share, and sell photos on mobile devices with PadProof. All right, welcome back to the show. You're listening live to live.digitalphotographycafe.com. We're here at WPPI 2012. And we're at the Fuji booth with Casey Baker, and we're going to take a look at the X-Pro1. This is a very cool camera, so why don't we give a little rundown to the viewers? Okay, well, the, uh, the basic rundown is the, is the fact that we wanted to go from, uh, from our X100 camera. It, it, basically, our X series is all about quality. And we wanted to be able to make a, a full-frame uh, quality image out of a APS-C sensor in a compact camera. So what we ended up doing is that we ended up taking out the optical low-pass filter and putting the, uh, the lens, uh, rear lens element, as close as possible to, to the sensor. Uh, in order to do that, we had to get rid of the optical low-pass filter. Um, and the optical low-pass filter is there because of more ray and false color. So how do we get rid of it if uh, we need it? So what we did is we made up our own sensor. So it's no longer a bare array of two by two, but it's a, a Fuji X-Trans sensor at six by six. So we're able to randomize the pixels a lot better. Uh, we also came up with our own uh, X-mount. So we have our own proprietary lens, uh, lens system. Uh, this here is a uh, 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter for those who speak in other terms. Uh, 1.4, very bright lens, very fast. We also have a hybrid viewfinder. Uh, which gives you a uh, optical viewfinder with a heads-up display. It gives you all the information you need. And you're able to hit this little switch here, and it takes you over to EVF, which is going to give the electronic viewfinder. Um, it's, you can see it's a nice retro design. You've, you've held it, so it's kind of nice. Yes, I can definitely <laughs> say I've held it. It is yeah. beautiful, nice and heavy, nice girth to a nice yes, weight to yes, it. feels like the old retro. Nice, nice, nice beautiful. Um, it also has a Q button on back here, so this kind of moves you through you know, your, your basic features, anything you need very quickly, you know, RAW plus JPEG, you know, just find JPEG, whatever. Like ISO balance, or... ISOs, et cetera, right. Um, you know, flash, your focus point, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's in there. You hit that very quickly and you're good to go. Uh, your AF, uh, your autofocus points, you know, we have several of those as well. So that's, you know, that's nice a little move through. It's a lot of autofocus points, yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's... Uh, we're and used to like 18 or, or so. This is like a lot of yeah. autofocus points. So if you're doing like macro work, you can really adjust where you want that autofocus to be exactly. so that you can take the picture without having to set and then correct and then set and back and forth shooting. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as uh, your, you know, your functionality, you want to do aperture priority, you basically move this, you keep this on auto. Or you want to do shutter priority, you just do the reverse. Like this, and you want to put it on P for, for, for professional. Of you put it on A and A, <laughs> uh, and then you use the exposure compensation dial, which is very, you know, very uh, quick right there, um, accessible. And uh, like I mentioned uh, before, the the little slant on here kind of gives you more of a yes, of a nice uh, stability. Yes. Yeah, better grip yeah. on it. Now this camera is definitely a pro camera, a pro level camera. Yes. Are, are, I mean, is this something that a photographer could feel comfortable? This is something a photographer could feel comfortable shooting portraits with, um, taking to a wedding. Yeah. So, I mean, wedding photographers would, you know, uh, love to have this also as a secondary backup camera. I mean, they could have it as a primary because we do have the three lenses that are like best for them. We have a, I said, a 50, uh, a 90, you know, for for portraiture, um, and we have a 28, which is a wide, the yeah, the wide lens, um, the wide focal length. Anyway, so they can also use you know those that are have like the heavy duty set uh, DSLRs that are already, like dialed into that, or they have you know a 645 uh, film camera. They could always use this as a backup, you know, for hybrid photography, and it's it's got the highest you know high quality. They won't have to worry about you know how that's going to blend into their you know into their workflow. Uh, the images we have around the booth here, shot by Jose Villa. You got a you know a bride, a groom, you know the cake, and so on and so forth. You guys can take a look at those later. But again, you you won't have to worry about it not being high quality enough um, 
Right. And for me, being a shooter for forever, just the just the fact that these things are such fast glass. We're seeing 2.0, 1.4 on a mm -hmm. 50, and I believe I think we say 2.4 if I remember correctly on the on the other side yes. on the 80 on the that's macro. On the 60, yeah. yeah, and that's just for for me. That's all I would shoot. I shoot 2.8 or less. So yeah. everything is wide open, and you have like a beautiful. The whole idea is many times you're sitting in a very very let's say not so conducive light yeah, <laughs> yeah. area where it's just not that great. You're sitting at one. 1.4, you can shoot this at 1600 and be there with almost no flash, get unbelievable great Yeah, images. I mean, natural light settings, especially if you're in, you know, the, the, the actual ceremony, there's no flash photography, it's, you know, nice exactly. and, you know, intimate. I mean, something like this, it's quiet, it's got great, great, um, um, uh, great high ISO capability. Uh, at 1.4, you're going to get some you know, fantastic results. Uh, it's, and again, also with the uh, with selective focus. I mean, if you you know those who really like doing selective focus photography, like that you know a lot of the bouquet effect, if you will. Absolutely. You know this. I mean, 1.4 it does a dynamic, dynamic job. That's great. Yep. I th I, you know, the, what I heard key here too is that quietness. Yep. I can't tell you how many times you know we've had a minister or a rabbi or someone, and they're like. No, stop, stop. You know, or we have to get far back, and now we're shooting a 300 mil just to get sure. The you mirrors know, clank, 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 yes, clank. Yes, because clank. the yeah. DSLRs are clack, 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 and this will be yes. basically silent. Yes. So that's, that's good. So it's a that's very, good. it's a very stealthy, high quality camera, and so like I said, like for a backup uh, camera, it's fantastic, and of course for a uh, a camera that the professional photographer want to take on vacation. This is also a it's just dynamite. Right. You just don't want to use the iPhone. You need oh, something. Please. Come <laughs> and you're on. like, what are you doing with an oh, iPhone? Oh, look at this and sunset you... <laughs> shot I have with the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, like, great. Oh. Okay. And you just wish you had the better camera, right? Yes. And then you can't bring the big monstrosity of a DSLR. Yes. This th this is amazing. amazing. Now, as far as price goes, is this in range for an advanced shooter? Because obviously, it's not a beginner camera. Is it in range of a of a advanced shooter, or is it really geared more price wise for the pro? Uh, well, it's it's geared somewhere in between. I mean, it really depends on how advanced the you know the the hobby photographer is, uh, the prosumer, if you will, right. and then uh, also the professional. I mean, it's definitely geared for the professional as far as price point. Uh, it's sixteen ninety nine for the body, and it's six hundred dollars for each one of the lenses, with the exception of the sixty, which is six forty nine. Okay. Yeah. So so it's in a it's in a higher price level, but that's sure. due to the quality. It's due to the construction. It's due to the fact that it's it is geared very specifically to that professional market and that, uh, you know, the aspirational quality of the camera. Yeah, and a 1.4, we all know, is going to be in that price range no matter what. Fast glass is fast glass. You're yeah. going to pay for it, and that, yeah. that's it. Good quality. And I like that, how you have that marrying between, that you can go from Fuji to Fuji to Fuji and have it all printed out. I know you have your, oh, yeah. your I mean, wonderful the other, yeah, frontier. Exa exactly. And, right. I mean, the thing is, is that this is um, the, the, uh, the thing we have in here is the film simulation modes. So the film simulation modes are all designed to be, you know, Fuji color. So you got 400H is designed in here, our Provia, our Velvia, and so on. And you can actually set it on whatever setting you want. And I've actually, I mean, this is this is past uh, past Saturday. I was able to take the shots and go directly from camera to our Fuji printer. So it's it's uh, the color is dialed in. The uh, the color space is all Fuji, and uh, you know we we know color. So we put it into our cameras. We put it into our printers, and it. Works very so what you see is what you're going to get. You got it. That's fantastic. That's great. Yep. So this is uh, another sample of our Fuji Crystal Archive paper, and uh, this is what we call our Fuji Flex material. Uh, this particular print, which is uh, called the Great One, was shot by Rodney Lowe Jr., and uh, he used uh, our Ostia 8x10 uh, film to, to capture the image and actually stitch it together. However, he printed it on our Fujiflex, which gives us this very iridescent uh, type of glow to it. Uh, it is a polyester-backed silver halide paper, and uh, it is just uh, one of the few uh, papers that Fujifilm makes, but uh, it's one of our, uh, one of our uh, rising stars. So to find out more about this wonderful new camera, where's yeah. the best place to go? Uh, well, people can go to either our Fujifilm USA website, so it's uh, www.fujifilmusa.com, or they can go to the Fujifilm-XPro1.com site. Excellent. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Casey. Thank you, guys.